All right, hello. So, continue natin yung discussion natin about lease. Okay, doon sa ating last na video, diniscuss doon yung general accounting sa point of view ni lessee or na umuupa natin. Okay? So, generally, kapag ka nag-enter siya sa contract of lease, okay, na isang identified asset or a consideration, okay, so ang kanyang i-recognize sa kanyang books ay magre-recognize siya ng right of use asset and then magre-recognize din siya ng lease liability. If ever meron cash out day, magre-recognize din siya. And if ever meron siya obligation to dismantle the property at the end of the lease term. Okay. So, kailangan din natin siya i-present value. So, yun yung ating ina-account initially kapag ka nagkaroon tayo ng lease si Lessie. And then, syempre, subsequent measurement natin, kung cost model yun, syempre, i-depreciate ninyo yung, yung inyong right of use asset. And then, yung inyong lease liability naman, syempre, i-amortize nyo, mag-recognize kayo ng interest expense, as well as kung paano yung payment natin, rental payment. Okay, yung rental payment natin, syempre, una yung sinacharge sa interest expense and then tsaka nyo siya ipabawa sa lease liability natin. Okay? So, yan. Now, let us proceed to recognition exemption. So, kailan hindi ganun? Or kailan pwedeng hindi ganun yung gawin natin kapag ka nag-enter si Leslie sa contract of lease? Okay? So, recognition and measurement exemption in the books of the lessee. A lessee may elect not to apply the foregoing accounting principles. Yun nga, yung magre-recognize sa'yo ng right of use asset and lease liability. And at the inception of the lease. Ano? So, kapag ka, ang inyong lease is a short-term lease and lease for which the underlying asset is low value. Okay? So, una, sir, ano po yung short-term leases natin? Okay? So, di ba generally pre-present value natin yung cash flows na ating mga rental payments for for more than one year? Ano? So, kaya, kaya natin siya pinapresent value kasi na yung time value of money is material. Okay? So, kapag daw yung ating lease is yeah, short term, kapag sinabi natin short term lease, yan, yeah, has a lease term of 12 months or less. Okay? So, for one year lang naman, for at a maximum, one year. Okay? So, yan. Pwede hindi na daw nat, hindi na daw tayo, hindi na natin i-recognize as lessee yung right of use asset and yung ating lease liability. Particularly sa lease liability, kailangan pa ba natin i-present value yun ay sobrang immaterial naman. Or yung parang sa inyong ang tawag natin dito. Uh, di ba kapag ka short term, hindi nyo na pwede present value. Ano kasi ang effect niya ang effect ng time value of money is hindi naman ganun ka significant. Okay? So, unlike yung mga long term natin na sobrang significant talaga ng time value of money. So, dyan, hindi na kayo nire-require mag-recognize na lease liability. Kasi parang burdensome siya. Hindi naman ganun ka material yung effect ng time value of money sa lease liability natin. And then, mag-undergo uh, pa tayo ng ganun kahassle na Um, recognition sa lease, magre-recognize ng right of use asset, mag-release liability, and then i-amortize din natin siya. Okay? So, mas maganda, yeah. pwede, daw, pwede daw kapag ka nag-short-term lease, ano, hindi na kayo magre-recognize ng right of use asset and lease liability. So, maya, malalaman natin yung treatment kung paano yung gagawin. Okay? The list term includes periods covered by an option to extend or an option to terminate if lessee is reasonable, certain to exercise the extension option or not to exercise the extension option. Basta yung lease term natin, ano, yung lease term natin, whether may, um, in-extend mo na yan or hindi, dapat yan ay less than 12 months lang or 12 months or less lang. Whether kasama na dyan yung extension option or hindi. Ano? So, yan na yun. Yan yung total lease term of 12 months or less. 
a lease that contains a purchase option is not a short-term lease. Okay. So, yeah. So, hindi ito kasama sa ating um, exception. Okay. So, kapag ka syempre merong purchase option, ang gagawin mo dyan ay yung treatment natin sa ordinary lease natin. Okay. If the lessee elects the short-term lease exemption, it must be applied to a class of underlying asset and shall treat any subsequent modification or change in the lease term as a resulting in a new lease. Okay? So, for example, yan, ano, so, um, ikaw ay umuupa ng mga motor vehicles. Okay? So, and sa iba't iba ka na upa ng mga motor vehicles. So, kung ang sa pag-upa mo ng motor vehicles na short-term lease, okay, pinili mo na i-recognize siya using measurement exemption. So, dapat sa lahat ng nirerentahan mo ng motor for less than one year, dapat i-recognize mo din siya as, yun nga, under our measurement exemption. Okay? So, ito kasi, this is your option may elect not to apply okay so this is just an option pwede mo i-recognize yung short term lease natin using the our general accounting for lease na magre-recognize ka ng right of use and this liability pwede rin naman na hindi ano so this option yung not to not to account the lease in the usual manner is given kapag ka short term lease or lease for which an underlying asset is low value. Pero, pwede nyo pa rin siyang i-recognize. So, it is just your option. Okay? Binigyan lang kayo ng option. Other than this, other than short-term leases and lease for which underlying asset is low value, so, required, ano, required kayo na measure mag-measure kayo na or mag-recognize kayo ng right of use and mag-recognize din kayo ng lease liability. Okay. So, yan. Itong sinasabi dito, kunwari, meron kayo, um, narenta kayo ng motor and then uh, sa iba't ibang tao, ano, so, dapat, um, same lang yung inyong ia-apply na accounting for lease sa lahat ng motor. Ano? It must be applied to a class of underlying assets. Okay? So, yeah. So, hindi siya, hindi pwedeng yung isang motor, i-recognize mo using measurement or exception, and then yung isang motor, i-recognize mo using our general accounting for lease. So, dapat dito kung paano yung recognition mo dun sa, sa isang motor, dapat ganun din sa lahat. Ano kapag ka siya ay shorter leases. The less you shall assess the value. Okay. So, next. Yeah. Leases for which underlying asset is low value. Okay. So, ano naman sir yung low value natin? The less you shall assess the value of the underlying asset based on its value when it is new. So, ayan. Ano? So, ang tinitingnan natin na value is ang presyo niya kapag siya ay bago. Pwede kasi, di ba, yung value ng asset natin mababa or low value siya kasi sobrang tagal na niya or sobrang luma na niya. Okay? Depreciated na siya. Pero yung low value na yun ay nag-arise because of its oldness. Okay? So, hindi yun yung hinahanap natin na low value. Dapat, um, kahit bago pa lang siya, mura na talaga siya. Okay? Or low value na talaga siya kahit bago pa siya. Ano? So, yan. Regardless of the age of the asset at the commencement, the assessment is not affected by its size, nature, or circumstances of the list. An underlying asset can be of low value only if... Yeah. The less it can benefit from the use of the underlying asset on its own or together with other assets that are readily available to the lessee. So, siya ay, it can stand on its own. Okay? The underlying asset is not dependent on, on or highly interrelated with other assets. So, baka naman kasi low value yun kasi siya ay accessory to other, um, to other assets. So, hindi yun yung 
hindi siya dapat i-consider as low value asset kasi it cannot stand on its own. An asset that is being subleased by a lessee or is expected to be subleased by a lessee cannot qualify as a low value asset. So dapat ikaw mismo, ikaw na lessee yung gagamit ng asset. Okay? So hindi mo siya ipaparenta ulit sa iba or papagamit mo ulit sa iba para makareceive ng iba consideration. So ito yung mga examples ng ating mga low value assets. Yan, yung ating mga tablets, laptops, small furnitures, telephones. Yan. So sila yung kahit bago pa lang, mura, mura siya. Ano, compared naman sa mga pinaparenta sa atin ng mga land, mga building, and the like. Ano? So yan. Election of the exemption for low-value assets can be exercised on a lease-by-lease basis. Okay, so kung dito sa ating kapag ka short-term leases, dapat pare-pareho yung treatment mo sa class ng asset. For example, nga yung motor. Okay, narenta kayo ng motor sa iba um, short-term lease sa iba't ibang tao. Okay, so kung paano yung treatment mo sa isang motor kung siya ay measure mo using except um measurement exemption. So dapat yun din yung gagamitin mo sa lahat ng motor using measurement exemption or recognition and measurement exemption natin. Kung ang treatment mo sa isang motor is using our general um, recognition and measurement sa ating um, lease as a lessee, dapat yun din yung treatment mo sa lahat ng motor. Dito, yeah, um, hindi per class yung treatment natin. It is on a lease by lease basis. Ano? So kunwari ikaw naman dito ay kapag ka naranta ka for example ng laptops kasi ikaw ay ano ba? Ikaw ay online um online teaching na ano tawag natin dito? Online teaching facilities ay hindi mo kaya bumili ng laptops para sa mga empleyado. Ang ginawa mo na renta ka ng laptops. Okay, sa iba't ibang tao din. So, pwede yung isang laptop, i-measure mo using measurement exemption. Pwede yung isang laptop, pwede i-measure mo using our general accounting for lease. Okay, yun yung sinasabi natin dito sa sa ano natin, the election of exemption for low value asset can be exercised on a lease by lease basis. So, pwede hindi mo siya i-apply sa entire class ng asset. Pwede Depende sa mapag-agrihan mo no, doon sa um, pwede kung um, paano yung magiging election mo na lang. Paano yung magiging election mo sa kung paano yung accounting treatment natin sa list na yun, yun yung gagawin mo. Kahit iba't iba sila on a class of assets. For example nga doon sa um, list of laptops. Madaming laptops. Ano? So, yeah. so dapat dito pare-parehas basta same class kung ano yung measurement ng isang asset dapat dapat yun din yung measurement ng ibang assets pagdating sa lease. Dito kahit iba't iba sila yung yung iba measurement exemptions, yung iba is general measurement na at lease. Okay lang. Yun. Okay. So when the lessee chooses this recognition and measurement exemptions for short-term leases and low value assets, it shall recognize lease payment as an expense on a state line basis. Unless another systematic basis is more representative of the lessee's benefits from the underlying assets. Okay? So dito yan. Um, ito yung alam ninyo na kapag ka nagbabay ng renta debit rent expense credit consideration natin. Okay? So yun na yun. Ano? Ayan. Ano? Accounting for optional exemptions. Okay. So ito ha. Um, ito ay choice nyo pa rin. Ano? Kung paano nyo i-measure itong dalawang list na to, Kung yung short-term list o low-value list. Pwede yung general natin, general accounting for list. Or pwede rin naman itong ating accounting for optional exemptions. It is the choice of the list. Okay, 
So, ayan. So, paano yung ating treatment dito sa ating um, optional exemptions? So, yung periodic payments natin, recognized as rent expense over the least term on a state line, uniform basis unless a more systematic method is warranted. Ano? So, dun sa general accounting for this natin, di ba yung periodic payments natin, pinine-present value natin siya, and then siya yung ating least liability. Okay? So, dito, yan. Yeah. Uh, siya ay um, nire-recognize natin as expense kapag ka, yun nga, na-incur natin yung um, na-incur natin siya. Na-incur natin yung um expense ano so yun kuno na gamit na natin yung one month magre-recognize tayo ng expense ano so yan next lease inducements so kapag kasi nabi natin lease inducements yan um ito yung mga ano um um grant ni lessor na mga benefits para ma-induce si buyer na mag-enter tayo sa lease Okay. So sometimes ang tawag dyan, lease bonus from the lessor. Okay. Yan, lease inducement para ma-induce tayo mag, uh, mag-lease. For example, ano? Yung free rent for three months. Okay. So yung free rents for three months, okay, finurnish yun ni lessor para mag-enter tayo sa contract of lease. Ano? Tayo si Desi. So yun daw, ang treatment daw natin doon, effect of lease inducement is reduction from periodic rent expense on a straight line, uniform basis unless a more systematic method is warranted. So kailangan natin i-spread out yung benefit na yun or yung inducement na binigay sa atin ni lessor. Okay? So yeah, reduction siya sa periodic rent expense natin. Next lease bonus, so ito yung mga uh, ito naman yung binibigay ni lessi para uh, ano tawag natin dito para i-grant sa kanya yung lease for example nga um, sinabi niya kay lessor na oh ito 20,000 uh, itong 20,000 na to uh, bibigay ko sa iyo kapag ka pinayagan mo kung rentahan yung iyong uh, building or yung iyong lupa okay so hindi pa um, hindi pa diyan kasama yung aking grant na babayaran yung 20,000 na niya. Okay? So 'yun, okay para lang para lang din siyang lease inducement. Ano? So, kaso nga lang since tayo si Lessie and ang accounting natin ay si Lessie, siya naman ay paad sa rent expense natin. I-spread out din natin yung ating um, lease bonus na binigay kay lessor all throughout the lease term. Pwede uniform basis, pwede straight line 'yun or pwedeng on a systematic manner parang sa government grant natin. Ano? Next contingent rentals recognized as additional rent expense when incurred that is when the condition or contingent event occurs. Okay? So kailan lang ma-meet yung condition? I-recognize natin siya as rent expense. Ano? So with that, let us proceed with the examples. Ano? So on October 1, 2022, X leased from Y a set of furniture. Okay, si X si lessor, lessi pala, si Y si lessor. For which X will use the period, will, will use for a period of 12 months. Okay, so ito ay low value lease na, and ano pa, um, short term lease. The annual rental is 18000 but why granted free rental for three months? Okay? Yeah, three month free rental. X paid 13,500 on January 1, 2023 to cover the remaining nine months. So 12 months yung lease natin, three months yung free, therefore ang babayaran na lang is yung nine months. So therefore, yung 13,500, it is the full payment for the for the lease and you know, for 12 months ending September 30, 2023. X reports a calendar year basis. Okay, so calendar year nag -e end yung kanyang um, uh, accounting period at December 31, 20. At December 31. 
So, the following are the entries in the books of X. So, kailan ba nag-enter ng lease tayo? So, nag-enter tayo ng lease no October 1, 2022. Ang tanong, kailan tayo nagbayad? January 1, 2023. Ay, next year. Pero since yun nga, uh, nagsimula na yung renta natin ng October 1, 2022. And then matatapos siya ng September 30, 2023. Tama kasi 12 months. So dapat tayo mag-recognize ng expense from October 1, 2022 to, October, to December 31, 2023. Okay? So bale, yeah. Ang annual rental is 18,000. Okay. Divide mo yan sa 12. Yan ay magkano per month? 18,000 divided by 12. Yan ay Asa na? Yan ay 1,500 per month. Ano? 1,500 per month. Okay? Kaso, itong 3 months natin, okay, 3 month rent, free rent, okay, so dapat yung lease inducement na binigay sa atin ni Lesor, kailangan din natin yung spread out all throughout the lease term. Ano? So ilan ba yun? 1,500 Times 3. Okay. So, ito yung total natin na lease inducement. 4,500. Okay. I-divide mo yan sa 12. Kasi yan ay, ang treatment natin dyan ay kabawasan sa rent expense natin. Okay. Kasi nga, di ba ito? No? Ayan. Ano? Lease inducement reduction from periodic rent expense. Okay. So, wala naman sinabi kung anong method ang ating gagamitin. So, ang assumption natin is straight line. Method 4,500 divided by 12. Bale, meron tayong reduction from monthly rent na 375. Okay? 375. Bale, kung monthly rent natin is 1,500, i-less mo yung 375 na lease inducement natin na spread out natin for 12 months, ito ay 1,500 less 375, 1,125. Ano? Times 3 kasi ang ating i-recognize -re for um, 2022 is from October 1, 2022 hanggang December 31, 2022. So that is 3 months. 1125 times 3, makukuha niya yung rent expense natin na 3375. Okay? So next, ayan. Okay, debit. Rent expense, credit, rent payable kasi magbabayad pa naman tayo on January 1, 2023. Okay. Next. Okay. So, on January 1, 2023, yeah, nagbayad na tayo ng cash na 13,500. Okay. And then, syempre binayaran natin yung ating rent payable amounting to 3,375. And dito, ni-recognize na niya yung ating um, payment for the remaining months of the of the rent natin. Okay, yung rent from January 1 hanggang September 30, 2023. Dinirection na niya sa rent expense kasi may expense din naman natin yan sa buong period. Okay, so pwede ang gamitin ninyo. So itong ginamit niya ay expense method. Pwede naman ang gamitin ninyo is asset method. I-recognize din siya as prepaid rent expense and then i-adjust na lang sa end of the period. Ano? So, gumawa na lang kayo adjustment. Pwede rent expense method. Yan. Ano? So, diretsyo nyo sa rent expense yung advance payment natin. Next, example number 2. On October 1, 2022, a list from B, a set of furniture 
which A will use for a period of 12 months. On this date, A paid the annual rental of 18,000 plus 3,000 incentive to B as an inducement to grant the rental for a considerably short period of time. A report on a calendar year basis. Okay, so dito, yeah, baliktad naman ano. So ang nagbigay naman ng inducement or nagbigay ng benefit is si Lessie. So ang ginamit niyang term is inducement. Pero malinaw na ang nagbigay noong additional consideration ay si Lessie. Ano? Yan. A list from B. Si A yung ating lessor. Uh, si A yung ating lessee. Si B yung ating lessor. Si A gagamitin niya yung uh, furniture for 12 months. Okay, si A ang nagbayad ng annual rental na 18,000 for 12 months plus nagbayad din si A ng 3,000 incentive kasi in, for the inducement to grant the rental for considerably short period of time. Okay, so yung lease bonus and lease inducement, ano? So nakadepende kung paano siya i-word sa problem, kung ano yung inyo gagawin. Kung sino yung nagbayad, yun na lang yung inyo tingnan. Kapag ka ang nagbayad is si Lessy, okay, siya ay additional consideration, additional sa rent expense. Kapag ka ang nagbayad ay si Lessor, siya ay kabawat or ang nagbigay ng benefit ay si Lessor or nagbigay ng inducement ay si Lessor, siya ay kabawasan naman sa ating rent expense. Okay? Yan. So, ang ating entry, okay? So, ang normal natin na rent is 18,000 divide by 12. Okay? So, bala ang ating monthly rental ay 1,500. Ano? Ito yung ating normal. And then, itong 3,000 is spread out mo to sa additional rent expense natin. Ano? Kasi kailangan siyang i-spread out. Ano? So, wala naman dito sinabi kung paano yung manner na i-spread out siya. Okay? So, ang gagamitin natin ay straight line. Okay? Straight line method. Okay? Bali, 3,000 divided by 12. Yan ay 250 pesos. Okay? So, bala ang i-recognize mo na monthly rent ay 1,500 plus 250. Yan ay 3,250. Okay? So, yan. So, bali yan. Mag-entry na tayo. Okay? So, yan. A reports on a calendar basis. So, ang kanyang accounting year is nag -e end ng December 31. Okay. So, una entry natin, okay? So, on October 1, nag-enter ng lease and on that date, nag nagbayad na kaagad siya. Ano? Itong 18,000 plus 3,000. So, ito yung ating entry. Debit, rent expense. $5,250. Ito yung kaagad para sa 3 months. Ang bilis, binayaran niya kaagad sa 3 months. And then, credit prepaid rent, ito yung para sa hindi niya ma incur for the year 2022. And then, cash 21,000, kasi 18,000 plus 3,000. So, maganda. Pwede naman, ang entry ninyo muna, since, yan, hindi pa naman to nag, nag, hindi pa naman siya na-incur talaga, ano. So, pwede ang gawin yung entry, debit prepaid rent, rent na 21,000 na lang. Kung expense method naman kayo, edi eh rent expense ka agad ang inyo i-recognize. And then adjustment nyo na lang sa dulo. Ano? Kung ano yung unexpired portion. Okay? So assuming rent expense yung aking ni-record. Ano? Rent ex a prepaid rent yung aking ni-record na 21,000. So on December 31, ang i-recognize ko okay magwa-whiteboard ako. Okay. Ang entry ko ay on uh, 01 
2022 debit repaid rent $21,000 and then credit cash $21,000 okay on December 31 okay so adjustment natin yeah, $12,000 $31,000 2022. Okay, i-recognize natin yung expired portion. Hindi lang ito ay asset method ang ginamit natin. Ano? So recognize natin ang expired portion. Oh. Ang expired portion, rent expense. Okay, so ang lumipas ay 3 months. So kung ano compute natin kanina, Ay, monthly rent natin, ay, monthly rent expense natin is 3,250. I-multiply mo lang yan na 3. Ano? Ah, bakit 1,500 plus 250? Ito pala ay 1,750 pala yan. Sorry. 1,5 plus 250, 1,750. Yan, sorry, 1750. 1750 multiplied by 3. Yan ay 5250. Ano? And then credit, tanggalin mo na siya sa prepaid rent kasi hindi na siya asset or expired portion na siya. Ano? 5, 2, 3. Okay. So, ayan. Ano? And then, at the next period, okay, at the year end, ira-recognize mo ulit kung ilan ba yung expired portion or hindi. I know. So, pwede rin naman kapag ka-expense method ang inyong ginawa, okay, initially, ira-recognize yung rent expense at as ay yung payment on October 1, 2022 as rent expense. Ano? And then, credit, um, at 21,000 and then cash 21,000. And then on December 31, hahanapin nyo pa yung unexpired portion natin. Ano? So an uh, unexpired portion natin is from October 1, 2022 up to December 31, 2022. Okay. So 3 months pa lang yung na-expire. Okay. Meron pa tayo ilang months na unexpired. Meron pa tayo um, 9 months. Kasi total ng 12 months yung ating... Um, yung total rent natin. Ano? O yung ating lister. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin, um, um, tanggalin natin yung, or i-recognize natin yung unexpired portion ng lease sa ating prepaid rent. Ano? Prepaid rent. And then, tanggalin nyo siya sa rent expense. Kasi unexpired portion pa naman siya. Ano so bali 1750 multiplied by 9 Ang ating total na tatanggalin sa rent expense is 15750. Yeah, ano? 15750. Okay. So ayan, ano so ito yung ating trip um asset method remember sa inyong accounting. Yeah, ito yung ating asset method. And ito yung ating expense method. 
Okay, so kapag ka tini-account nyo naman to parehos lang naman yung kalalabasan nito, no? So, yung t-account ng ating rent expense, tsaka t-account ng ating prepaid rent. Okay? T-account ng rent expense, tsaka t-account ng ating prepaid rent. Okay. So ito yung ating asset method ha and then ito yung ating expense method. Ano? So kung ipo-post natin yan sa books, ano? So by i-recognize natin yung prepaid rent debit dito. Ano? 21k. Okay. And then yan. On sa adjustment natin on December 31, okay, nag-recognize na time debit 5250 5.25. K na rent expense and credit prepaid K na 5.25 K. Okay? So, bali, ang total balance eh, ng ating rent expense is 5.25 K. Ang prepaid rent natin, ang total na balance is ilan? Um, debit 15.75 K. Ano? Next, kapag ka expense method, pareho lang talaga yung kalalabasan. Ano? Nag-recognize tayo on October 1, 2022 na debit 21K. And then, on December 31, diba? Nag-recognize tayo ng prepaid rent, debit 15,750, 15.75. And then, credit rent expense, 15.75. Okay, kapag kakukunin natin yung balance na, makukuha natin na meron tayong net debit na 5.25k para sa rent expense. So pareho sila. And then yung ating prepaid rent, ano? 15.75k. Okay, so pareho din sila. Okay, so depende kung ano yung gagamitin sa problem kung asset method or expense method. As pareho lang naman yung kalalabasan yan kasi generally ang tinatanong naman sa problem ilan ba yung um, naging rent expense during the period or ilan ba yung balance ng ating prepaid rent for the period. Ano? So yung accounting method ninyo, okay, kapag gagamitin sa problem, maganda. Pero uh, kapag ka hindi, okay, so nakadepende sa inyo. Ano so ang hanapin naman is yung total expense and yung total unexpired portion or yung asset portion natin. Okay, so pareho lang naman yan at year end kung ano yung ating gagamitin. Ayo ah, kung ano yung magiging amount ano at year end. Ano? So yeah, pareho sila mapa asset method, mapa expense method. Okay. Continue natin. Ayun na pala yun. Okay. Okay. So, yan yung ating gagawin kapag ka ano ha, measurement. Um, we elected to measure our leases. Okay using measurement exemption. Ano? So, applicable lang to or magkakaroon lang kayo ng option to recognize leases under this method kapag ka, yun nga, kayo ay short-term lease or kapag ka low-value lease. Ano? So, wala kayong option to do this kapag ka hindi, wala dito sa dalawa. Okay? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So next topic natin ay the sales and lease pack. Patanong na lang din sa comment section kung ano yung inyong tanong dito sa topic. Ano? Thank you.